Yo people, you recognize the shitty uh, cell phone video quality. I'm back with another collection video and today I'm gonna start off with Euro Trash. So what is Euro Trash? It's exploitation films, uh, lower budgeted, less uh, artistic than what you usually think of when you think of European cinema. And I'm starting off with my third uh, director that I have most, uh, the most movies from. Uh, Jess Franco and should I be ashamed of that probably let's start with the big at the beginning Well, not really his first movie because he made like 200, but the awful dr. Orloff, which is a a 60s film black and white that has really good atmosphere good cinematography, and it's actually one of my favorite from Jess Franco it's um, it has this classic horror feels and pretty much same thing with the diabolical Dr. Z. A lot of movies about doctors, but they're they're quite enjoyable. I really enjoyed these two films. Uh, 99 Women, if you saw uh, my last, um, not my last video, but the video about the, the trailer compilation, which most of you haven't, because it's 18 and plus, mainly because of this film. This film's trailer has a uh, woman naked kissing, because that's offensive, guys. Eugenie, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm pretty sure it's classic exploitation. And Eugenie de Sade, of course, Soledad Miranda, so how bad can it be? She's beautiful. Speaking of which, this is like kind of the Soledad, uh, uh, what's her name again? <laughs> Soledad Miranda section. Uh, she killed an ecstasy. Uh, I love this release, love this flick. Uh, this is like as Franco as it gets. Vampiros, Vampiros Lesbos, Lesbian Vampires, classic genre, <laughs> the classic subgenre of horror, the Lesbianic Vampires. Now I love, I, I love these releases by Full Moon, uh, but I only have like two of them and most of them are out of print, but if you all have all of them and you put them in the correct order, unlike me, which are, uh, it makes uh, Jess Franco's face, so uh, if you have the rest of these releases for not too much, I would gladly take it off your hands. But this is Love Letters of a Port Port Portuguese Nun. I haven't seen it, this one yet. Not a big fan of nunsploitation usually, but I think this is more of a mix between women in prison and nunsploitation. So, and it's Jess Franco, so it's probably some sleazy fun. Jack the Ripper, probably... Uh, what uh, Just Franco made closer to a giallo. It's a pretty fun movie. I quite enjoy that one. Ilsa the Wicked Warden, the only Ilsa film that's not in my uh, Canadian collection, because this is not a Canadian film. In fact, this is not even an Ilsa film. This is a. not even a spin off, it's just a film with Diane Thorne that was uh, redubbed, uh, uh, renamed after Ilsa. The real name is like Greta something something. Bloody Moon, Jess Franco's entry into the 80s slasher and I I quite enjoyed this one. I really do. It's really a fun, gory, really gory, nice little flick. This is probably Jess Franco's worst that I've seen. I, <laughs> this is fucking terrible. Also, this Blu-ray is shit. Um, there's a glitch. I don't know if it's just this copy. Bought it on Amazon, but there's a glitch where it replays like the same five minute scene without dialogue or music, and then it plays that scene again but with the dialogue or music. This is. It's already a fucking pathetic excuse of a film. Having a shitty fucking release like that doesn't help. God. I really hope I didn't pay too much for this. I probably paid like 15 bucks, which is way too much. Should have paid a dollar. Night as a Thousand Desires. I haven't seen this one yet. I think this was Jess Franco's first film when he went back to Spain because after the communist dictatorship fell in Spain, that's when um, uh, Jess Franco returned to his uh, native country. And I think this was his first one and it stars his uh, future wife. Neurosis. Uh, Revenge in the House of Usher. I haven't seen this one yet. 
and Faceless. It's another 80s one, and it's another one that I quite, I do, oops, sorry for the VHS. I do quite enjoy this one. It has Brigitte Lahaye, which she was an ex-French porn star. She's beautiful, and this is, I think, a remake of the awful Dr. Orloff. Uh, oh, no, I think, yeah, no, it's a diabolical Dr. Z, uh, Dr. Z, sorry. I'm not American, so I say Z, but it's quite the enjoyable flick. Finally, off the bed, and we start with the British. The British are coming. Uh, Pete Walker, is it Pete Walker or Peter? Pete? No, I'm pretty sure it's Pete Walker. Oh yeah, it's Pete Walker. <laughs> Sorry, a box set of Pete Walker's uh, Frightmare, House of Whipcord, The Flesh and Blood Show, and Die Screaming Marianne. I, I haven't seen, the only one I'm, I haven't seen is House of Whipcord, which is kind of surprising because it's a British woman in prison film and you would think that I would, I would jump on that. But all of his movies uh, on this box set are pretty good. Well, the one I can say. Uh, F uh, Frightmare is probably my favorite. Uh, scream, Die Screaming Marion, a close second. I should probably get a Blu-ray of that. Cause, and I have a Blu-ray of Frightmare. That's how much I enjoyed it. It's, it's, it's a really fun flick. Uh, Home Before Midnight. I haven't seen this one yet. This, I think, is more of a drama uh, about a man falling in love with a girl that might be too young for him. I don't know, I haven't seen this one yet. Jean Rolin, so now we're in the French uh, tr Euro trash section, and it's all Jean Rolin. It's all Jean Rolin. The man has a part in my shelf, like an entire country. He represents the entire country of France. This is the Vampire Collection, uh, Rape of the Vampire, The Nude Vampire, Shivers of the Vampires, and Requiem of the Vampires. They're the, the they um they differ in quality, but overall I do enjoy uh, Jean Rollin's um, films. But most people would probably say they're boring, uh, slow burning pieces of shit. But I I enjoy them. Fascination, which also stars uh, Brigitte Allaire. Um fun little flick. The Grapes of Death, which, if I'm not mistaken, also has uh, Brigitte Lahaye. Uh, this one's probably one of my favorite. Especially, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I read this one's great time. This one is terrible. It's modern, too. It's like from 2003, and you're like, oh, yeah, Jean-Alain worked better in the 70s. The Euro Sleaze Collection, fucking love this collection. Sister of Ursula, The Sinful Dwarf, and Anna D. I should really get myself a Blu-ray of The Sinful Dwarf. It's a fun-ass movie. Sister of Ursula is probably the sleaziest giallo, like right up there with Strip Nude for Your Killer. It's it's about a a, a, a a man who kills women with a giant wooden cock. Like, how can you not enjoy that? Sinful Dwarf is about a sleazy dwarf uh, that gets women hooked on heroin and prostitutes them. And Anna D is a film about a young prostitute. Now we get into some British... British... With a Killer's Moon. Uh, so, well, some more British. I should probably put them with... Oh no, that's my director section. I'm just talking at this point, but uh, Killer's Moon, Circus of Fear, fun, fun little one. Seven Murders for a Scotland for Scotland Yard. Uh, this is obviously a bootleg, and it's a Spanish giallo starring Paul Nashi. And speaking of that, Blue Eyes of the Broken Doll. This is a masterpiece, guys. If you haven't seen this one, it's too bad that it's out of print. I'm not sure if it's on one of those Paul Nashy Scream Factory the uh, Blu-rays that I missed out on, but it's it's truly a great uh, film. Horror Rises from the Tomb, another Spanish film starring Paul Nashy. This one's fun too. Not as good as uh, our, the, the previous one, but uh, I do, I did, I did really enjoy this one and uh, recommended. Again, out of print, hard to find. The Blood Spattered Bride, fun, lovely, um, 
a Spanish film. A lot of, a lot of uh, really atmospheric, really um, suspenseful, really enjoyable. Fraulen's Devil. I haven't seen that one, and if I did, I don't remember it because they all blend in together. Fraulen's in uniform. This one, I'm sure I haven't seen. But then again, they do all blend in together, but you know, these cheap DVDs. Mad Foxes. Now, I couldn't find this movie on my um, movie cataloging um, application. Uh, <laughs> but this is obviously bootleg, but this is one of the funnest, so bad, it's good movie. It's one of them, like Raw Force, where I just show all my friends. Cutthroats 9 and Joshua Cut Cutthroats 9, a spaghetti western but Spanish and it's quite gruesome, it's probably the goriest of the spaghetti westerns. Pieces, come on, come on, everybody, everybody loves pieces. Slugs, one Piquier Simon, just like pieces, it's absurd, it's gory, it's fun. House on Straw Hill with Udo Kier, I think this one's British. Uh, and it's it was the only British film like from Britain on the um, video nasties list, and it's quite a fun one. I love Linda Hayden, such a beautiful one. House of Seven Corpses, another one of these British film early Severin releases, one of the first Severin uh, I bought, right up there with House on Trial. Oh, and this has the bonus uh, video nasties documentary. But yeah, this one's really fun with John Carradine. I like it. Mark of the Devil, classic, classic sleaze fest. Baby Blood, I don't think it's really Euro trash because it's later, but it's about like it just looks trashy. And finally, my only Polish film. Obviously a bootleg, but I don't even know how to pronounce and this these cards these cards I put so much effort in them, but they're a pain in the ass. Wilkitsa. It's a vampire film from Poland. Now we're getting to Euro. So those are these are the classiest like You know respected uh, films like Hammer uh, Great Little Collection the Hammer Dracula's collection pretty fun the Devils, which is, um, it's a masterpiece that's been lost to censorship, sadly, because British, uh, the Brits are cunts, and they, they don't like these types of movies, so it has been cut and butchered over the years, and I think this is the closest to, um, to, uh, Ken Russell's original idea, but I think it's still missing a couple minutes. The Long Good Friday, British crime drama, really good one. Ah, uh, yes, you guys know I'm a big comedy nerd, so of course Monty Python and, uh, and Meaning of Life and Monty Python and the Holy Grail. This one, uh, I'm a basic white bitch, but this is probably my favorite. I fucking love that movie. Probably my my favorite comedy, honestly. It's between this and Super Bad, I know. But, you know, Scum, such a, such a freaking great film. I love this one. Climax, Gaspar Noé's latest, and I quite enjoy it. Uh, it's not for everyone, obviously, and uh, it's good. I like it. Enter the Void, I haven't found the time or the interest yet, but I really want to see it, the Gaspar Noé. Obviously, Reversible is with the disturbing films or the extreme horror films. High Tension, this one I hear a lot about, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, Frontier, which is an like eye tension in the um, French New Wave Extreme uh, uh, films thingy that happened in France. This one I really do enjoy. Bitter Moon, by directed by a pedophile. Farewell Friend is a French film, quite quite enjoyable. La Chinoise by Jean-Luc Godard. I'm missing uh, another of my Jean-Luc Godard film. Again, borrowed it to a friend. Uh, Catfight. I don't know, I haven't seen this one. Oh yeah, The, the Germans. Der, der Fan. This one is great. This is such a good like social critique, critique, critique on um, 
fandoms and the star system and as someone who doesn't really appreciate the star system and doesn't see celebrities as super powerful uh, over um, human beings I see them as human beings this is a good film The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari of course Run Lola Run really fun action uh, film from Germany High high pace, like if you have ADHD, this is the perfect action film for you. If you have ADHD, you should watch this. Christian, Christian F, I think it's because it's uh, German, so it's like Christina F. But this is, uh, I haven't seen this one yet, but I've heard it's quite the uh, depressing little flick. What the Peeper Saw, fun little 70s movie. In My Skin, I haven't seen this one yet. Witch Hammer, uh, one of the original, so this is like the classy version of Mark of the Devil. Valerie and her Week of Wonders, again a Czechoslovakian flick. Santa Sangre, of course, Alejandro Jaradowski, I need more of his films. And my favorite from him, again, basic white bitch, but Holy Mountain, fucking great movie. Now we're getting into Scandinavia, so uh, films from the land of Scandinavia. Night Visitor with Max von Sydow, rest in peace. Evil Ed, what can I say about Evil Ed? Evil Ed? This is a masterpiece, fuck, great movie. Again, a masterpiece of exploitation cinema, thriller, the color one eye, uh, Vengeance Edition, because I don't care too much about the hardcore porn insert. Dead Snow, Norwe Norwegian uh, Nazi zombie flick, pretty fun and for five bucks, <laughs> how can you go wrong? Uh, Dead Snow 2, Red vs. Dead, fun too, but I prefer the first one. And finally for Scandinavia, I don't have that much, but let the right one in. Now Australia, a good eye mate. Catsick Blues, I haven't seen this one yet, from the Wild Eye, Raw and Extreme. It's extreme. Wolf Creek, great classic Aussie film from recent years. The Loved Ones. I'm on the fence about this one. I don't know if I like it or I hate it. Need to rewatch it. Bad Boy Bobby. <laughs> I don't know what kind of accent this is, but it's an accent. <laughs> this is wow. Wow. Mad Max. <laughs> uh, Mad Max the Road Warrior. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Turkey Shoot, probably my favorite of the Oz exploitation. But then again, so is the man from Hong Kong. And then again, uh, Road Games is okay. Road Games is okay. This. This, though, is a masterpiece of cinema. Fucking Long Weekend, guys. Get yourself a copy of Long Weekend. You won't regret it. Now, my home and native land, Canada. Of course, starts with uh, the one and only Cronenberg. With They came from within. Uh, I saw where this was shot in the apartment complexes in Montreal in 2019. The last time, you know, we could get go out uh, go out and rabid which i think i saw the um the mall this was shot in uh both amazing films i mean i don't need to say anything about david cronenberg videodrome come on this one's a fucking masterpiece it's on criterion guys it's one like one of the few criterions i showed you uh I think only Godzilla previously was on Criterion. Oh, and Rashomon and uh, a couple of Japanese films. Prom Night. Prom Night. Doo -doo. Everything is alright. One of my favorite slasher. This is fucking great. I love this one. Like, movies like Prom Night make me proud of being Canadian. Like, fuck those uh, NFB whatever shorts. Like, Prom Night. Death Dream. I haven't seen this one yet. I paid ten dollars for it though. The little girl who lives down the lane. What can I say about this film? This isn't kind of exploitation. Like this is pretty. Like this is good. Like cinema. Jodie Foster's 
fucking great actress like and she's like 12 so that's as in that makes it two, 10 times more impressive uh martin sheen plays this fucking anti-social obviously mentally unstable psychopath this is a great movie blue monkey this got a blu-ray release this is like my shitty vhs bootleg but i haven't seen it yet i should because apparently it's fucking great Ghostkeeper, uh, go watch my review of this. Now we're getting into the good stuff. <laughs> the Ilsa films. Ilsa Aram Keeper of the Oil Cheeks. This one was rated R. That's not a good thing if you know about the Ilsa films. Ilsa She-Wolf of the SS. I just love this copy. This is the original Anchor Bay. Um, I'm gonna make a um, retrospective on this fran this entire franchise on my mo Dirty Movie Corner series. This is the box set which contains all of the official Ilsa films, so it's missing the Jess Franco one. So, She-Wolf of the SS, Aram Keeper of the Oil Cheeks and the Tigress of Siberia, which, is, which was the last one I needed, but instead of just getting that one, I got the entire collection. Uh, fun one, I have a poster of this one in Japanese, signed by the beautiful and lovely Diane Thorne. Festival Spasm, I don't know if this is this still this is still going on, but I, what, from what I remember, Spasm was a genre film f festival, but dedicated to short films in Montreal. And this is the first volume, and this uh, is where I um, discovered the guys that made Turbo Kid with the Bagman short film. And I only have this this one um, release, but I know they made a couple. Smash Cut. Uh, <laughs> I just I only have this because I am deeply in love with Sasha Gray. And uh, this is a Canadian film, so best of both worlds, but mainly because I fucking love Sasha Gray. American Mary, uh, Saska Twins, um, with Catherine Elizabeth, Isabel. This one, it's good, it's good. I need to rewatch it because it's like um, the loved ones where I'm on the fence if I like it or I don't like it. Astron Six Boys. Their first feature, Man Borg, uh, all on green screen, but it's it's fun. It's a fun one. Turbo Kid. If you don't like Turbo Kid, like unsubscribe. This is a masterpiece. Come on, guys. And finally, The Void, which is uh, a recent project by a couple of the Astron boys, and it's quite a good one. I did really enjoy that one, like a lot. So highly recommended. Plus, it's Canadian support. If you're Canadian, support the Canadian artists. Now we're getting into exploitation, one of my favorite part. Come on, guys, this is what this channel is all about. And let's start off with the godfather of the modern exploitation films, Herschel Gordon Lewis and the Feast box set. Love me some Gordon Lewis. I rewatched 2000 Maniacs recently from this box set, and it's fucking great. The Last House on the Left, Arrow's magnificent release of this classic exploitation film by Wes Craven. Highly recommended. Another Craven masterpiece, The Hills Have Eyes. And another great Arrow release. Such an amazing movie. I love this one. But now let's get into the more obscure ones, but still classic. I Drink Your Blood. This is a tradition around here that I watch it in October. It's one of my favorite of these uh, low-budget exploitation films from the early 70s. Duke Mitchell's Gone with the Pope with the GTA um, fonts. Love this one. Uh, it was lost for a while and then they refound it and Grindhouse releasing re-edited it. Well, re-edited the footage that they had and they made this. Dukes Mitchell, Massacre, Ma Mafia style. Oh my god, this is if... This is if Duke Mitchell made The Godfather. That's that's it. It's, it's great. I spit on your grave. 
and I piss on your corpse, which I think was a shot on video sequel to this. Um, come on, guys, I spit on your grave. It's 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 I spit on your grave. Three on a meat hook, obviously bootleg. Um, this is a terrible movie, but I love it. It's because it, what it represents, right? This is one of the classic American grindhouse films. Like this, you would have seen in the 70s in a drive-in or a urban grindhouse theater. And it's all what exploitation, it's the exploitation film to define exploitation film. Like it's boring. The title's great, the cover's great, the last 10 minutes are great, and the last, uh, the first 10 minutes are great. So it makes up about 20 minutes of the movie is worth watching, and the rest is goddamn boring. But it represents these types of movies, right? This is the typical exploitation film where the trailer, the poster, the beginning and the ending were the hook. Rest of the movie? Don't give a shit about. You were probably smoking in theater, sleeping, trying to get a get yourself a hooker. So you didn't care. Only thing that you cared about was that sweet poster that got you to spend for 25 cents. Last house on Dead End Street. I want to make an entire documentary about this move. That's how fascinated I am by it. Spider Baby, Jack Hill's classic, classic Spider Baby. Such a wholesome, fun horror film. Coffee. Fucking coffee. Pam Greer, goddamn, come, come on, how can you not love this? Same thing with Foxy Brown. If afros aren't your thing, which, which I'm judging you, if afros aren't your thing, that Foxy Brown is your thing. God damn. Black Mama, White Mama. This is fucking great. A Pam Greer and Woman in Prison action film. Come on. Can't get much better than this. Blackenstein. I haven't seen this one yet. Shaft and Shaft's big score. Yes, my man. Shaft. Jim Brown in Slaughter, come on, these are just great films, I love them. Now we're getting into the weird, more experimental, I can say, um, of the Grindhouse Exploitation films. Start off with The American Project Volume 2, Dark August, Dream No Evil and The Child, which is produced by Harry Novak, and this, uh, I watched The Child the other day, and it was quite the ride. I did really enjoy it. An old-school zombie flick, really fun. Toys Are Not For Children, I haven't seen this one yet, but I did watch The Baby, and The Baby... What the fuck is this, man? It's great. It's really weird. It's really a film that you couldn't even think about making today. It's That's why I love exploitation uh, films from the 70s. It's for these types of movies. Not so much the three on the meat hook, but these types of movies. Hitchhike to Hell. Boring. I think this is Ari Novak too. The Witch That Came From The Sea. This is fucking weird, man. It's great, too. The Premonition, Premonition, I haven't seen this one yet. I just got it on my last Aero video cell. Flesh for Frankenstein, also known as Andy Warhol's Frankenstein. And quite the sleazy little flick. Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, come on, this is a great movie. If you don't like this movie, what are you doing on this channel? This is a 60s weirdness, exploitation, artsy, written by Roger Ebert, uh, directed by Russ Meyer. Come on, you can't get much better than this. Keeping in with the um, um, artsy exploitation, The Velvet Vampire. And now some classic uh, exploitation with a little bit of William Castle. I quite enjoy Homicidal. I haven't seen Mr. Sardonicus yet. Um, some more classic, this is, I think, the more classic exploitation section, you know, Roger Corman, 
some more Roger Corman there. You know, box set. This one has uh, The Trip and um, a couple of them. The Trip, The Wild Angels, uh, The Young Racers, Gas, Man with uh, Bucket of Blood. Bucket of Blood is quite enjoyable. Two Headed Transplant and The Thing with Two Head. Rock and roll, rock and roll high school. I forgot the lyrics there. I know it's pretty simple lyrics, but rock and roll high school. Roger Corman again, quite quite fun. The teacher, classic exploitation. I love these types of uh, exploitation films. Uh, <laughs> yes, Day of the Animal, Grizzly and Deadly Dog. Um, Day of the Animal is quite fun. Grizzly Two, Devil Dog is not great, but uh, all enjoyable little flicks. Uh, the Defilers and Scum of the Earth. I bought this for Scum of the Earth, but now I have it on Blu-ray on the um, Herschel Gordon Lewis collection. But, you know, Defilers still look good. These are both 60s roughies. Malatesta's Carnival of Blood. This, again, should be with the more experimental, weird uh, exploitation films. But, uh, fucking weird one, man. Blood Beach. It's Blood Beach. <laughs> It's Blood Beach. Don't look in the basement. Uh, classic one. You, if you have like these uh, horror movie packs, you probably already own this one. But this Blu-ray is quite quite good. Oh, watch this yesterday. Devil's Reign holds up really great. Like this is a great film. The Crazies. Uh, George A. Romero's The Crazies, the original. Really good one. Really enjoyed that one. Uh, Love of Me Deadly, I haven't seen that one yet. I think it's about necrophilia, probably. Eaten Alive by Toby Hooper. What a fun movie, what a fun movie. To Toby Hooper really knows how to get like the crazy out of his character. Squirm! 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 It's gross, but it's fun. I don't like worms. The deranged, oh no, just deranged uh, confessions of a Nick. This should be with my Canadian films. I just realized that this is a can exploitation film. I'm retarded, but this is a great film. Unhinged, one of the video nasties that shouldn't be a video nasty, it's such a boring, shitty film. The Andy Milligan collection, the ghastly ones. Come on, guys, that's a classic. Now some, I think I'm, oh, whoa, don't, don't, don't fall over, you piece of shit. Uh, whoa, don't fall over, you piece of shit. Uh, Savage Streets, come on, how can you not like this one? This is probably one of the best, like, 80s uh, exploitation. Hey, you piece of shit, daddy's gonna be angry. Uh, Reform Skulkers. If you like 80s babes, that show a lot of skin. I quite do. Uh, Monster of Blood and the Demon. Uh, Worm Eaters. <laughs> I fucking... Uh, this is a Japanese release, by the way. When I went to Japan, this is the only uh, DVD I bought. I don't know why. Why I bought this. This is one of... The, like, I can't watch this film. It disgusts me on a level... Like, everyone talks about disturbing movies. Like, this isn't disturbing. This is just disgusting. I can't fucking stand it. Oh, it's disgusting. Brutes and Savages, a little shockumentary, their Mondo film. film. You yeah, know, nothing great. And that's pretty much it, guys, for this part of my collection. See you around.